we're going to talk about physical wholeness, about physical health. I'm going to talk to you today about your body. How would you like that? I'm going to do it anyway, so you might as well like it. Are you an investor or a gambler? <laughs> what kind of a statement is that? Well, are you investing in good health now so you'll reap good health later? Or are you gambling that you can do nothing to take care of yourself or possibly even mistreat and abuse yourself and get by with it? Well, how do you abuse yourself? Well, how about too much stress? How about being overworked and overcommitted and having no real balance in your life? not resting enough, not laughing enough, no regular time off. How about not enough sleep? <laughs> I can't tell if you're excited or not, but I am. <laughs> How about worry? Anxiety. What do people think? What's going to happen in the world? What's going on with the government? What's going to happen to my kids? What's going to happen when I retire? Well, I got another idea. How about living today? <laughs> I mean, really, how about no regrets and no dreads? And let's just really find out what today holds for us. How about a poor diet? Well, sweetheart, I'm here to help you today. <laughs> How about drinking everything but water? How about no exercise? You know, if all you do is sit in a chair somewhere and press buttons on remote controls, you're going to die a lot earlier than you should. We have all these joints in our body because God intended us to move. Now, okay, so somebody's probably thinking, well, wait a minute, I got a lot of problems. I didn't come here to find out about my body. <laughs> okay, now let me tell you why this is important. How you feel physically, how you take care of yourself or don't take care of yourself affects every other area of your life. Every other area of your life. It affects you spiritually, you feel lousy and you're tired because you haven't had any sleep for the last three nights, you are not going to want to pray. You are not going to be able to study the Word and really focus because your mind is completely worn out. Come on now. It affects you. It affects you. It's going to affect you mentally. It's going to affect you emotionally. And I think a lot of people try to have all that other stuff in order. They want to be strong spiritually. They want to be stable. They don't want to worry all the time, but they do a lousy job at taking care of themselves, and they feel so bad all the time. God didn't create us to feel bad. He didn't create us to have pain everywhere from the top of our head to the bottom of our feet. I don't think it's God's best for us to have to live in a doctor's office and spend all of our money paying medical bills and taking all kinds of tests. Thank God for the medical help that's available. I use it too, but I still don't think that that's God's best for us. And I believe that stress is probably the number one cause of disease. Because disease, if you take the hyphen out, is disease. <laughs> and the more disease we have, the more disease we end up getting. My daughter told me an interesting story. She called me yesterday, and she said that I could share this with you. She said, I just had a really, really, really rough week. She said, I mean, like, I acted really bad. She said, I mean, I just lost it several times, and I acted bad with my family. I had to apologize to them. She said, I got mad at the gym and said a bunch of stuff there I shouldn't have said. And now I feel, she said, I just had a really bad week. And, you know, she's a really good girl, and she really loves God. And, and uh, 
So that's out of character for her. And she said, when I really got down, I want you to listen to me. She said, when I really got down to pray, oh, and she said, I cried a lot. I was fighting discouragement. So we're having all these mental and emotional issues. And she's a planner. And so she likes to get things done. You know, she's a hard worker and she likes to get things done. Well, when, when something else happens, which it always does, has anybody ever noticed that your plan just doesn't work out 100%? And I mean, just crazy stuff. Like she had, she had to do something and she stayed on the phone for an hour and 45 minutes on hold trying to get this thing taken care of. And when she finally got a living person, right when they were ready to finalize the conversation, the call got disconnected. Now she's got to do it all over again. And her and her family are going to Prince Edward Island for a vacation this year, which is in Canada. So she totally was unaware that her passport had expired. And her husband said something about, are our passports still good? I don't know. They ran and looked, sure enough, they were expired. Thought it'd be an easy thing to get one, found out that was a nightmare too. Took all kinds of time, not even sure they're gonna get them in time. Well, yeah, they probably will get them in time, standing at the post office, standing in lines, on and on and on. So it just put her over the edge. You know what, if you live on the edge, if you live on the edge, there's always gonna be something the enemy will use to push you over the edge. Come on, that's really good, I've never said that before. I like that, that's hot off the press. That's gonna be a Facebook post. If you live on the edge, the devil will always push you over the edge. And too many people do that today. They push themselves and push themselves and push themselves and then if anything else happens, like Wah! <laughs> Now I know none of you are like that, but I can still get that way if I'm not careful. Thank God I don't get that way too often anymore, but I used to live like that. And there's far too many Christians that do live like that. And we need to start taking better care of ourselves. So anyway, she said when she settled down enough to start praying, God, what is the root of this? You know, if we keep having the same thing happen over and over and over, why don't we get smart enough to get with God, to get with him and say, God, what's the root of this problem? Because there is a reason. You know, if you love God with all your heart and you're, you're, you're into it, I mean, you're going to church, you're studying the Word, and yet you've got a bad temper and you're blowing up every time you turn around, there's a root to that that you need to find. Because where there's a rotten root, there's always going to be rotten fruit. And she said, the whole thing when it came down to it, was I just had not been getting enough sleep for probably a couple of weeks. And she said, I stay up at night because I want to get things done. And then I don't get enough sleep. And she's, so she said, God has dealt with her seriously enough about this now that she believes if she doesn't get enough sleep that it's actually going to be sin. And can I tell you something? Contrary to whatever you believe, you don't belong to yourself, and I don't belong to myself either. <laughs> and just to be honest, any Christian who has that attitude, well, you know, it's my life, I can do what I want to, then you really haven't read the Bible yet. You can do what you want to, but God is offering us the possibility of being led by the Holy Spirit into life with a capital L. We talked last night about how the Bible says that there's a life offered to us. And it's not just a breathing and a walking around life. It's life as God has it. Zoe life is life as God has it. Man, what kind of an awesome promise is that? And you know, I also know another young man, somebody that I've known for quite a while, 
And this guy just had a bad temper and was so hard to get along with and grouchy and cranky all the time and yet had been a Christian for a long, long time. And, you know, everybody's kind of got to the point, well, you know, that's just how so-and-so is. And he ended up through a course of some events changing his eating habits and going to work out. He's working out right now every day. I can't handle that. But, I mean, I, I believe in exercise. I think that we don't get enough in our daily life now. People years ago didn't have to pay to go to a gym to exercise. They got it just in their daily life. But we don't have to sweat. We don't have to, we all, we push buttons and the dishes are done. We push more buttons and the TV comes on. We get on automatic steps and go up and down escalators and elevators. We get mad if we can't get a parking place at the front door. <laughs> and Lord only knows we wouldn't want to sweat. We might get some toxins out of us that are, <laughs> that are killing us. So I, it is hard for me to believe the change in this man that I'm talking about. Just from changing the way he eats and getting regular exercise. And I'll tell you one thing, the better you feel physically, the better you feel about everything. It gives you more confidence, it gives you more boldness, you walk more upright, you're more energetic, you want to be involved in things. And I'm telling you right now, maybe you have some sickness and there's some things that you can't do anything about, but if we will start doing something about the things we can do something about... You know, everybody wants a miracle. I mean, if I said I'm going to stay here after this meeting and pray for everybody that's sick, why, we wouldn't even be done when the meeting started tonight. And then after praying for all of you guys, I'd be sick because I'd be worn out. And you know, one of the things if you want to eliminate stress in your life is you've got to realize you can't give everybody else in the world what they want. You've got to give yourself some of what you know that you need in order to be healthy and function properly. For them. And I want to tell you, irregardless of what you might think, this message I'm sharing with you today could possibly be one of the most important messages that you ever hear. Because when Jesus offers us a new life, there's a lifestyle that goes along with it. You don't just receive Christ and then continue to live the same old way that the rest of the world does. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life, capital L. Now, we need to learn how to obey him. So, now, when I talk to you today about a few things about eating, I'm not, this is not a discussion about what you weigh. So, let's don't get into that. I'll just simply say that I think everybody needs to get rid of the mentality, I'm on a diet. You don't need a diet, and I don't either. We need a new lifestyle. Anybody who goes on a diet to lose 50 pounds, there's probably the mentality, I want to lose this weight so I can hurry up and eat everything I want. <laughs> well, we know where that goes. You spend the whole, your whole life just going through the same cycle over and over. That's why we don't, don't even think I'm on a diet. Just think, I'm going to learn how to live right. I'm going to get proper exercise. I'm going to take care of myself. I'm going to eat some things that are enjoyable to my taste buds, but I'm not going to live on junk all the time. To honor God, I'm going to take care of myself, and I think that I can make you a promise. Unless you have a metabolic disease, which some people do, you will end up weighing what's right for you without going on a diet. I said if you eat right and get enough exercise, you will end up weighing what is right for you everybody's not going to look exactly alike. I have a friend that eats more than I do, and she weighs 93 pounds. And it's annoying. <laughs> Is anybody understanding what I'm saying? Is this making any sense? All right, let me ask you a question. How many of you are here today, and you know already that you need to take better care of yourself? Well, there we have it. We got the right group. <laughs> All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. 
I just love God's Word. You know what is so amazing to me about the Word of God is, <laughs> now, this could sound funny if I say it, but the Word of God in some ways is not real spiritual because it's so practical. It's like, yes, everything that Jesus said is spirit and it's life, but it's like, it's not just a bunch of religious stuff. I mean, God cares about every practical area of our lives. 1 Corinthians 3, 16. Now, you know what? Those of you that are already doing the right things, you can just sit there and say, amen, amen. <laughs> just in your heart, you're going, yep, that's right, amen, amen. And those of you that aren't doing what's right, you're going to be saying today, oh me, oh me, oh my. <laughs> Do you not discern and understand that you, the whole church at Corinth, are God's temple, his sanctuary, and that God's spirit has his permanent dwelling in you, to be at home in you collectively as a church and also individually? I think one of the most amazing things that I find in the word of God is that we are God's house and he lives in us. I mean, I could sit around and ponder that day after day after day and never, never understand the wonder of it. The mystery of the ages, Christ in us, the hope of glory. How awesome is that? You are God's house. Everybody say, I am God's house. I am God's house. Now, if anybody does hurt to God's temple or corrupts it with false doctrine or destroys it, God will do hurt to him and bring him to the corruption of death and destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, sacred to him, and that temple you the believing church and its individual believers are. Now, okay, he may not be specifically talking here about some of the things I'm talking about today, but the principle is there that we are not to do hurt to the temple of God. Do you, you know, a lot of you would treat the church building that you have your services in on Sunday morning with more respect than you treat your own physical body. <laughs> I like this area over here. They're, they're behaving much better than you guys are. You're gonna, you're gonna have to catch up here. You know, in the Bible, in the Old Testament, the temples that were built for God, the temple that Solomon built, the, the temporary tabernacles in the wilderness, I mean, there were detailed instructions given on how to build, decorate, and care for those temples. I mean, very specific, detailed instructions. It was beautiful, it took a lot of care to keep it in good condition. And there were times in history when the, when the temple did fall into disrepair due to periods of negligence, and entire programs were designed to rebuild and repair. So my question to you today is, do you need a fresh coat of paint or an entire program to rebuild and repair? <laughs> See, for some of you, this could be just like, making a few little adjustments in some things. Okay, I won't drink quite as much coffee and I'll drink more water. Okay, I'll, I'll get, try to get seven hours sleep a night instead of four. No, do I have to adjust it more? <laughs> I get eight hours sleep every night. I'm not nice if I don't. <laughs> there was a time in my life when I could do six for a few nights in a row. And you know, not everybody needs that. I mean, Dave has a sister who sleeps five hours a night and has done it all of her life and just feels great. She just doesn't need much sleep. But there are not very many people like that. Most of us need good sleep. And very few people get it. Now, in order to get it, I have to say no to a lot of other things. You are looking at a woman that's home at night. When I'm not out preaching, I'm home, having my chair therapy. <laughs> Amen? I mean, you know, there's a lot of things I can tell you from, from damage that I've done to my body in the past through ignorance and overdoing and having too much stress in the name of Christ and trying to help people. <laughs> you know, it's kind of interesting. You can't break God's 
natural laws even thinking that you're doing it to serve him and get by with it. I made myself sick working in ministry. And I can show you another guy in the Bible, Ephrodites, who almost died because he worked so hard in the ministry. And so God tells us there are certain things you need to do to take care of yourself. And if you don't, things are not going to function well. Well, one of the things that I did was I wore out my adrenal glands. And so I still have to deal with some effects from that. And so there's a little chemical in your body called cortisol, and it's supposed to be at a certain level when you get up, high when you get up, lowers down when it gets time to go to bed at night so you sleep real good. Well, mine's like this. It's low in the morning and high at night. So in order for me to bring it down at night, I need about three hours of just real peace and quiet, and then I can go to bed and sleep really good for eight hours. So that means that I have to say no to running around all night every night with all my friends and being involved in everything that's going on because that's what I need. Now, you don't have to do what I'm doing, but you do need to find out what you need. Come on. Okay, now look. <laughs> I know that a lot of you are real young and you're just thinking, man, this is not for me. I feel great. But what I'm trying to say is if you don't do what you need to do now, you're not going to feel great eventually. And I know that's hard to swallow when you feel good. It's like, eh, <laughs> piece of cake. Uh, I got it going on. Well, <laughs> Hebrews 12, 11 says, no discipline for the present seems joyous. Nevertheless, later on, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness. Now, I'm going to put my little picture up. That's me when I was three. Okay, now listen. Now, here I am later on. My point is, is I was three years old at one time. I was 15. I was 20. I was 25. I was 30. I was 35. I was 40. So I don't care where you're at in there. I've been there. And I'm trying to make a point that now I'm here. And no matter where you're at, you're going to get here too. And beyond. Amen. Well, this is an encouragement to make sure that you take care of your physical body. It's actually the house that you live in, and it's the vessel that God wants to work through. And the truth is, is if you wear out the one you've got early, you can't just go somewhere and buy another one. So I believe that one of the real secrets to feeling good physically is to be an investor and not a gambler. What I mean by that is invest in your health instead of doing a lot of wrong things, gambling that you won't have any bad results. But I know that I know that I know that the Word of God is true and that He changes lives and He gives you a life worth living. Misschien ken je Joyce Meyer van haar boeken of van haar programma Enjoying Everyday Life. Maar wist je dat Joyce Meyer Ministries ook overal ter wereld concrete humanitaire hulp biedt? Door middel van voedselverstrekking, ziekenhuizen, noodhulp bij rampen, het bevrijden van slachtoffers van mensenhandel en nog veel meer. Deze christelijke hulporganisatie heet Hand of Hope en draait volledig op giften. Early on, mom and dad, you know, really just started to realize just how full the Bible is with uh, mandates that we're supposed to take care of the poor. You know, it talks all the time about visiting those that are in prison and feeding the hungry and you know taking in the stranger and, and taking care of the widow and the orphan. And so we strive to do that. And as the ministry has grown, our, our ability to influence and do bigger things has also grown. You know, it's really great to have the ability to feed children all around the world. And I have a goal and a desire to keep feeding more and more all the time. This after-school feeding program serves an average of 90 to 100,000 hot meals per One year. One meal for these kids is, is survival. 
Well, I'm here in Thailand at one of our children's homes. You can feed, house, and educate a child. Hope Cambodia has been absolutely amazing. We've opened 15 different orphanages. And we're so grateful to be able to build this well here in Sri Lanka. We love to get clean drinking water to people. Well, so the water they're drinking is not making their children sick, and it's, it's not dirty, contaminated water. <laughs> definitely feel in Haiti just the absolute desperation. I'm at the Cure Hospital in Malawi, Africa. A huge line of people who are waiting to see our nurses and our doctors. Many doctors and medical people have volunteered their time. We are in Summers Point, New Jersey. Well, today we're, we're in Joplin, Missouri. We're here in Haiti in the village, and we're about to move people into brand new houses we've built. The winds were so constant with these big, big gusts. It was terrifying. 150 or more were killed. Thousands left homeless. Hey, you there, guys? Uh, those gifts and joys five minutes. Here in Zimbabwe, I was able to hand out the two millionth bag in a prison. That you can't have a different life today. Don't know how many, you know, lives you guys save by coming in and showing the love that you guys show. Human trafficking, today's term for modern slavery. We've been working in different parts of the world and providing a, a place for women to come out of that lifestyle and be restored. It, it, there's no limit here. This is, this is ran by God. He changes lives in Project Hope. You can change, you can get healing, you can survive. Over Jezus vertellen en mensen laten zien dat God van ze houdt. Ja, de vele noden op de wereld gaan de mens te boven. En misschien vraag je jezelf af of je er überhaupt wel iets aan kunt doen. Maar dat kan dus wel degelijk. Hand of Hope, de christelijke hulporganisatie van Joyce Meyer Ministries, is daar het bewijs van. Alles in één keer oplossen gaat niet. Maar wij bieden mensen één voor één de helpende hand. I read her book, Battlefield of the Mind, in prison. My stepfather, he was an abusive man towards me. I used him as an excuse for years to do drugs. I would play it out in my mind like, if everybody knew my pain I was feeling, they would, they would understand why I was doing it. But I had to forgive him, and I did that in prison after reading Battlefield of the Mind, and that's what released me. Je kunt dit boek bestellen via onze website joyce-meyer.nl of telefonisch 026 20 22 100. Ga ook eens naar de Facebookpagina van Joyce Meyer Nederland. Like deze pagina en ontvang elke dag inspirerende uitspraken van Joyce op jouw Facebook. Open, direct en to the point. Kleine oases in je dagelijks leven. Lees mee, het is het waard. Alleen bij Joyce Meyer Nederland op Facebook.